In this video we're going to look at simple probability. We're going to look at, in particular, using the language of probability, also working out some simple numbers associated with probability, and we're also going to look at how you can mark those numbers onto the probability scale to show how likely something is to happen. This is the probability scale here. I've marked on my probability scale um, some numbers and some words. The words are sort of the easiest ones to understand, I think. Um, if you think about the probability that tomorrow you're going to win the lottery, it might be unlikely. If you haven't played the lottery, it might even be impossible. If you think about something that is certain to happen, well, you could say that tomorrow you are certain um, that you are going to walk around or breathe in and out. Things that are definitely going to happen. Something that is evens is going to be described as half. The probability will be a half. And that means that it's kind of a 50% likelihood of going to happen. So something in that category might be if you flip a coin, you could get heads or tails. Let's have a look at working out some numbers associated with common things. Coins, dice and spinners. If you have a coin, if you flip a coin and you want to write a complete list of all the things that could happen, there's only two things that could happen. It could land on heads or it could land on tails. So we say that the probability of it landing on heads is going to equal one out of two, one half. That's because there's only one side which says heads, but there are two sides of a coin in total, heads and tails. So there's one way it can happen, one heads out of two. And if you always try and make your probability statement, say in your head, how many is it out of, you'll usually get to the right answer. Equally, the probability of getting tails is also one out of two. There's only one way you can get tails on a coin. There's only one side of it which says tails. And the other side says heads. So it's one way out of two. If we look back on our probability scale here we can see that these things there therefore are both evenly likely evens okay a 50% chance you will get heads a 50% chance you will get tails similar thing happens on a dice on a dice there are six possible things that you could get one two three four five or six the probability of rolling a 1, which we'll use this notation for, probability of rolling a 1 is 1 out of 6 this time. Why is it out of 6? There are 6 different results you could get, 6 different faces of the dice. Only one of them has got a 1 on it. The probability of getting a 2 is also 1 out of 6. There's one way of doing it, out of 6 in total. The probability of getting a 3, you guessed it, is 1 out of 6. There's only one way of doing it, and there are 6 possible outcomes. In fact, all of these probabilities are 1 out of 6. Some people think that these outcomes are equally likely and therefore you would use the word evens to describe them. But that's not quite true. They are equally likely. They are all 1 out of 6. But if we look at our number line, they're only evens if the probability is a half. 
the probability in each case here is actually one sixth. So these are not what we would describe as evens. The probability of getting a one is not evens, it's one out of six, which is down here somewhere, it's unlikely. It is unlikely when you roll a dice that you will specifically get a one. You're more likely to get a two, three, four, five or six. But if you look at the two, the probability of getting a two is also one sixth. It's unlikely you're going to get a two. You'd probably get some other number. It's unlikely you'll get a three, you'll probably get some other number. In fact, they're all unlikely to happen. It seems silly to say, because you're certainly going to get one of them, but each one on its own is unlikely to happen. If we look at a spinner, this is the sort of spinner that you might get, I don't know if you imagine the game Twister, where you spin the spinner in the centre and it lands on one of these. I've got a spinner which says A, A, B and C. If we look at the probability of getting an A, the first thing to ask yourself is how many is it out of? I'm going to write a fraction. What's it out of? Well, there are four sections and assuming this spinner is fair, in other words, all the sections are equally likely, there are four possible sections that it could land on. But this time there's not just one A, there are two A's. In fact, there are two ways that you could get an A out of four. The probability of two out of four, if you simplify this fraction, by dividing both numbers by 2, you get 1 half. So on this spinner, the probability of getting an A is evens. You'll get an A 50% of the time. What about the probability of getting a B? The probability of getting a B is 1 out of 4. And if we look on our number line, 1 out of 4 is somewhere in here. It's smaller than a half. A quarter is smaller than a half. So it's somewhere in this zone here, unlikely. And the probability of getting a C is the same, 1 out of 4, unlikely. Some people might be tempted to describe this as an unfair spinner, but if each section is equally likely, we would describe this as a fair spinner, even though A happens more times on the fair spinner. I'm now going to look at, in particular, these number lines trying to get the probabilities in the exact right place on a number line. It's quite common in exam questions for them to ask you to put an arrow at the correct point on the number line. and You need to, need to know how to do that. Here I've got a spinner. It's got six sections and I'll, I want you to imagine that it's completely fair. I haven't drawn it very well but imagine that it is completely fair. So all of these sections are equally likely. If I wanted to mark on here the probability of getting red on my spinner, I would need to put an arrow somewhere that represents the probability of getting red. Let's work out the probability of getting red. First of all, ask yourself how many different sections of the spinner are there? There are six. So my fraction is going to be out of 6 to begin with. Second of all, you need to ask yourself how many reds are there? There are 3. So the probability of getting red is 3 out of 6. You can simplify that to make a half. And that kind of makes sense. If you look at the spinner, half of it is red, marked with an R. So I would put my probability of getting red at this point here. 
and the word that I would use to describe that is evens. If you spin this spinner, you will get a red 50% of the time. You would expect to get, I should say, a red 50% of the time. Let's have a look at these other colours now. We've got a blue. The probability of getting a blue, well, there are two ways of doing it out of six. Now, this is where these little dashes on the number line will come in. Each of these dashes on the number line represents, if you like, one of these sections. So if I count up here, this will be one sixth, this will be two sixths, three sixths, which I've always said is the same as a half, four sixths, and five sixths. And then finally, six sixths is a whole. So here we've got a probability of getting blue is two sixths. So I'm going to put a B there. That's where the blue would go. Two out of six. And I would use the word unlikely to describe that. And once more, we'll do the green section. The probability of getting green is one out of six. If you look at the spinner, there's only one way of doing it out of six. And that means that the probability of getting a green goes here. Again, unlikely, and more unlikely than getting a blue. OK, let's have a look at this dice. A normal dice, OK, and we want to know the probability of getting an even number. Well, if I look at my possible outcomes, again, there are six possible outcomes on a dice, so my fraction is out of six, and I would like to have an even number. How many even numbers are there? One, two, three even numbers. Three out of six, as on the last example, can be simplified. So the probability of getting an even number sits there on the number line, one half. The probability of getting a five, there's only one way of doing it. It's there. There's one side which is going to show a five, and it's out of six. So the probability of getting a five, remember you'll need to label up your number line, three six, four sixths, five sixths. The probability of getting a five is here, one out of six. And the probability of getting a factor of twenty, remember a factor is a number that goes into twenty. So one goes in twenty times, two goes in ten times, four goes in five times and five goes in four times. So if you look, I put dots next to them, there are four out of six outcomes which are factors of 20 and therefore that goes there. Last of all, I've got these cards marked with A's, B's, C's and D's. I'm going to put them in a hat, I'm going to choose one at random. They're all equally likely, these cards. What's the probability that I'm going to get an A? Well, if we look, there are three A's and there are eight cards in total. So my probability is three eighths. Where does that appear on my number line? Well, if you label each one of these going up in eighths, one eighth, two eighths, three eighths, this should be four eighths. It's labelled as a half, but that's okay because they're the same. Five eighths, six eighths, and seven eighths. And if you went up to 1, that would be 8 out of 8. So we've got 3 eighths. This is the probability of getting an A. Probability of getting a B. If you look, there are 2 out of 8 ways of doing it. So B goes here. Probability of getting a C. Again, there are 2 out of 8 ways of doing this. So I could put a C there as well. And the probability of getting a D, there's only 1 out of 8 that are D's. So it goes there. OK. I'm going to stop there. I want you just to remember that with simple probability you've got words like impossible, unlikely, evens, likely and certain and they fit on the number line here with half being the probability representing evens.